Hi everyone, we are so excited that you have joined us for our Forgiving What You Can't Forget online Bible study. You guys, this is Bible study number 51 here at Proverbs wow. 31 Ministry. That is incredible. Isn't it incredible? It's great, yeah. <laughs> well, my name is Melissa Taylor, and I am joined by the author of Forgiving What You Can't Forget and president of Proverbs 31 Ministries, Lisa Turkhurst. Thank you so much, Melissa. It's such an honor to be here with you. And we've done Again. a lot of life together. Yes, you we know? have. A lot of years. And years, years and years. Life. I was trying to think this morning how long we've known each other. Other. And has it been like 20 years? It has. I remember the first time I met you, um, you were taking your kids to a movie and I was taking my kids to a movie to see Lilo and Stitch. That's how long how ago it was. Like, do you I don't even that? know. I, because I was meeting Lisa Turkhurst. <laughs> and I remember I was meeting <laughs> Melissa Taylor. <laughs> So. I remembered it so well. <laughs> but um, I know uh, some of you are new to online Bible study, so we want to welcome you. And Lisa, for those of you who are a little unfamiliar with your story or maybe they don't know, you know, um, why you wrote this book, tell us a little bit about, about Lisa Turkhurst. Yeah, so the main backdrop of the book is just walking through some really devastating hurts and wounds. But it wasn't just present day hurts and wounds. I think a lot of people know my story of, um, I found out my husband was being unfaithful and um, I was shocked and shattered. And so um, just devastated during that time. And what I started to recognize is that as I started this process of forgiveness and trying to walk forward, there was a lot of pain from my past that was unresolved that was feeding the very present day resistance to forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And so it sent me into this world of trying to really heal, not just from what I was facing right in front of me, but also some things that were unresolved in my past. And, you know, I would have told you, oh no, I've really dealt with everything I need to deal with in my past. But when I look at the concept of forgiveness, I think the thing that was making it so complicated to me is in theory, I had forgiven. Right. But I really didn't have marked moments of forgiveness. I didn't really know how to forgive and I didn't know what to do with those feelings, those triggers, those painful situations that would happen right. that would make me doubt that I had actually forgiven. Right. This must have been a difficult book for you to write. Was it hard to, as you, I mean, are probably reliving things that you're including in the book. How did you get through the writing process? Well, it was a difficult book to write because it's not a message I ever wanted to have to live. And then I, I know whenever I sit down to write a book, I'm going to be knee deep studying this topic for two years. And so I really want to make sure it's something that I need to work on because that's where my best writing comes from is when I'm struggling with something and I want to have the Lord address it. And so it's, you know, it, it's a deeply, intensely personal journey for me. Right. So this message was so hard for me to write because I was so resistant to forgiveness. And I wouldn't have said that. I would have told you at the beginning, like, yeah, I should work on some forgiveness stuff. And so you know, that'll be a great topic for right. me to write. But as I got into it, I started to find little hidden places of bitterness in my heart that I wasn't attributing right. to bitterness. Right. But even more than that, I just found myself feeling like resistant to forgiveness because forgiveness started to feel like to me an unfair gift I had to give to the person that hurt me. Right. And I didn't want to do it. Right. And isn't it so strange with forgiveness? It feels like it's too soon to work on forgiveness until it feels like it's too late to work yes. on forgiveness. And then it just never seems to be the perfect time. Right. And I remember in one particularly hard season where it looked like everything was falling apart and then everything fell apart worse. And I went to my counselor and I remember just walking in that day feeling like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. I was having a hard time just putting one foot in front of the right. other. I don't know if you've ever been in a season where truly just breathing and getting through that day takes 
as much energy as you can muster up. And so it was just a very, very hard season. And my counselor looked at me and said, Lisa, do you want to heal? And I said, yes, I do want to heal. And he said, today's a good day to start working on forgiveness. And I remember looking at him and thinking, are you crazy? I know. I want to heal. Yeah, no, you've just you crossed the line. Address the fact that I haven't washed my hair in like ten right. days. Well, I remember reading this in the book, and yeah. you weren't even sure if you had deodorant on, but you yes. saw some peach air freshener yes. in the bathroom that she was like, "Okay, I can just use." Yeah, that. I thought I'm a resourceful <laughs> woman, so yeah, I'd sprayed peach air freshener on myself before well, I walked into the appointment. So I walked in smelling like a freshly baked peach cobbler. <laughs> That's what I said in the book. But um, I just remember Jim saying, "My counselor, his name is Jim." Like. You know, we're going to work on forgiveness. And I just thought, how can you possibly work on forgiveness when the other person hasn't said they're sorry, yeah. when they're not owning what they did, when I'm not sure I'm done hurting over this? Right. And I know in one place in the book I wrote, hurt feelings don't often want to cooperate with holy instructions. Mm-hmm. And I was just so hurt. The thought of forgiveness felt so cruel to me almost. Well, and you know, you also write about how as Christians, we know we're supposed to forgive. But if you had written a book on forgiveness, because you just know that is the biblical thing to do, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I bet it would look nothing like the book that you've written today because of how you've had to face forgiveness at this time. I don't think I would have written it with the appropriate amount of angst Mm -hmm. because, you know, when you talk about forgiveness, forgiveness spans a vast array of hurts, wounds, offenses, and people attach the word forgiveness to some of the most devastating things that they've faced, some of the ways that people have hurt them the most. And I think if I would have written this book 10 years ago, I probably would have been so far removed from the sources of devastation, because I did go through some really hard things as a child, but I think it would have felt like I was making forgiveness too easy. And that's why I'm grateful God had me write it in the midst of my own healing journey, because I can so clearly identify with what someone's feeling when they're so hurt and now they have to work on forgiveness. And it just feels like an impossibly, sometimes cruel command by God. And so I'm, I'm grateful I was able to write it in that place. And I think when people sit down to read a book, more than being taught, they wanna be understood. Mm-hmm. And that's where they are when they start reading the book. And so I don't come out swinging in the book saying, you should forgive. I just simply and gently start with the pain because that's where someone is when they pick up this message. There's something that has caused them a lot of pain. And I want to start there because that's where I had to start. I felt like as I was reading this, that I had permission to still be in pain. Like I had permission to not be to the point of where I was saying, I forgive you or even if I've said I forgive you, really going through the process and facing the things that happen after forgiveness when you really yeah. have forgiven. And we'll talk about that some as we go through this study. But you know, this book is about forgiveness, but it's also about unforgiveness mm-hmm. too. Um, unforgiveness is a place that many of us live because it's just hard to forgive. It's painful and it's messy. But yet forgiveness is obviously a big deal to God because he sent Jesus. And so talk to us a little bit about that unforgiveness. Well, I think some of us are eager to just move on, right? Like, I just don't want to deal with this anymore. I I want the pain to go away. And especially if the relationship, if there's a relationship involved in that, if that relationship is not restored, then it can just feel like this is a useless activity. They don't want my forgiveness. So why would I do the hard work? of right. giving right. forgiveness, right. you know? Because it's a lot of work. And so I think we misunderstand what forgiveness really is. Forgiveness is not just an unfair gift that you have to give the other person, the person that hurt you. Forgiveness is really God's gift to the hurting human heart so that we can be cleaned out from those things that will taint our heart You know, when bitterness and unforgiveness and anger and resentment, when it comes knocking, it doesn't just want to like 
come for a visit. It wants to move in and, and really take over. Right. And it will start to, the evidences of unforgiveness will start to leak out and taint every relationship that we have. And so I had to recognize that I can't just move on. I really do need to do the work of forgiveness. And I also had to realize that forgiveness doesn't originate with me. I can't wait until I feel forgiving to try to conjure up this forgiveness that God talks about in the Bible. Forgiveness doesn't start with me. Forgiveness starts with God. God is the originator of forgiveness. And so really, forgiveness is not based on my determination. Like I determine, Ugh, I'm going right. to eke out this right. forgiveness. Forgiveness is based on my cooperation with what God has already provided. And as God's forgiveness flows to me, I simply must cooperate with it and let it flow through me. And it's in that passing through that cleans my heart out from unforgiveness, bitterness, mm -hmm. and anger. But I do wanna say one other thing because I think this is really important. Sometimes, you know, when we hear the word bitterness, we can get very defensive because, and I, I don't want to say we, I'll just put this on me. Like I can get defensive because I'm like, I'm not bitter. Right. Like, do you realize how much I've been hurt? Right. Like, no, I'm just guarded, you know, and we can call it so many other things or I'm cynical or I'm skeptical of other people or whatever. But in the deepest parts of our heart, we know that there's some bitterness just kind of eroding away the best of who we are. And so I want to say to you, we all have bitterness in our heart. This isn't me trying to identify some group of people. They're like, ooh, they're so cold and bitter, right. you know? Bitterness doesn't often visit the person with a cold, hard heart. Bitterness comes to that person who has dared to love deep. So they got hurt really deeply when they threw their arms open wide and then either got betrayed or wounded or rejected or shut down or ignored or um, just hurt in some way. And so I know we're going to get into this in future chapters, but I just want to say right from the beginning, it's okay to admit that you have some unforgiveness or some bitterness or some resentment or some grudges, whatever you want to phrase it like, it's okay, you know, and, and God isn't mad at you. He's not angry at you. He doesn't think you're a horrible person because of this. He loves you and he wants to tend to your hurting heart. And so it was so important at the beginning of the book for me to reassure people, like bitterness is not an indication of a limitation that you have to love people. It actually indicates the exact opposite. And if you're struggling with unforgiveness, I would say it's probably because you have great capacity to love people, but you've also been hurt. And so let's deal with that hurt so that it doesn't become a liability or a limitation in your future relationships. Because you definitely can, you can get better. You list a whole, a lot of things that can happen as a result, like getting cynical. And you can also just wear a mask and pretend like it didn't happen, but it's not going to make it go away. That's right. And why did I know how to write that list? Because <laughs> could you experience a lot? I've experienced it, right? <laughs> right. So, you know, it's not an academic study um, of bitterness and the psychology behind resentment. It's not that. It is me sitting in front of my Bible weeping because I know what it feels like to have all this hurt inside of me and not know how to take those steps toward healing. Right. Well, you guys, each week we're going to be digging into a different aspect of forgiveness, hearing more about your story, but also you are invited into the story as well. And so we hope as you go through this online Bible study, you will comment to us in our comment sections on social media, as well as on the blog. We really want to hear from you. We want to pray for you. And so it's time. Pick up your books right now. We're going to be going through the introduction, chapters one and chapter two. And um, we are really excited, Lisa, to, um, to start studying this book. I think so sorry for anyone who felt the need to pick up this book because we do know that you've experienced um, pain and hurt 
and you're wondering maybe what to do next, but so thankful that you have written this book to share with us Thank so you. that we can learn and grow from it. And you guys, it is filled with God's word. That is the whole foundation of um, everything that we do here at Proverbs 31 Ministries because we believe God's word is the truth. That's right. And you know what I'm about to say. That's right. Because when you know the truth and, and live, live the, the truth, truth it, it changes, changes everything. everything. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Bye.